Hey everyone, this amazing ESO Network show is brought to you by our fine sponsor, Amazon.com. Please remember to shop Amazon for all your geeky needs, no matter what time of the year it is. All you need to do is go to ESOPodcast.com slash ESO Amazon, or click on the Amazon banner on the ESO Network webpage to go to our e-store. It's the best way to shop and the best way to support this program, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Okay, that's enough of me babbling for now. Now on with your regular scheduled show. Welcome to Myobi Defend Your Childhood, a podcast where every week we put a little bit of your past on trial. Wait, you don't know who we are? Well, fine. First, we take a movie that you like. You know the ones. The ones the bus has always had on field trips. We got a real jam going down. Welcome to the Space Jam. The afternoon animated show tie-in. More rewrite history. Or the ones your parents didn't want you to see, but you watched at a sleepover. So that's the game. The movies are ten years old, and the defendant hasn't seen them in five. Then we, well... We're here to talk about the Sandlot. When I was a kid, I wasn't allowed to play with the other children, so this is how I learned human interaction. Ask them what they think. Obviously, I remembered your wigs, because as soon as my parents found out that I was deathly afraid of parasites, they were like, let's show her wrap of <laughs> So, in the end... Does your past hold up? Can you defend your childhood? Tune in every Thursday to find out. Hello, and welcome again to the Monster Sci-Fi Show podcast. I am your host, The Monster back again this week to give you some sci-fi news for this week so as usual i have my usual big three topics which first off i'm going to be talking about the dark tower trailer as well as the trailer for the defenders i'm going to also talk about philip k dick's new anthology series that's coming to amazon and also, there's kind of an update to Hulu, which there's some news within Hulu and Hulu itself, which I'll talk about at the end. And towards the very end of all of this, I'm going to talk about Dimension 404, which is a series on Hulu, which I just finally now finished, which is only six episodes, but I'll give you a quick take on that. But before I get even started... Let's start off with some bad news. I'm going to be canceling my Dune Book Club podcast that's going to be coming next month. Only because I'm finding myself having less and less time to do the kind of shows that I want to do. And I want to still have fun doing it as opposed to forcing myself to cram as much as I can throughout the day and not liking the process. So, like, for example, I just got Rebels Season 2 over the weekend. So I want to take the time to enjoy that. But if you know Dune, Dune is a very heavy novel. And I've read it several times. Again, the only book that I've read several times. I don't have the the time or the devotion at this time to make it a great podcast. Maybe in the future I will. So add to that, I'm going to be presenting at a library conference come July about podcasting with librarians. So that's something that is very exciting. This is the first time I'm going to be presenting for a full session as opposed to the shorter five to ten minute lightning round uh, tech space discussion. So... I'm very happy about that, so I have to start working on preparing for that, as well as come Dragon Con, which is going to be in August, I'm planning to go up to Atlanta to be with my ESO Network colleagues, and possibly, and this is something that still has to be ironed out, possibly do a panel on podcasting up there as well. So... Unfortunately, I don't have enough help 
to do this. I'm the only one that's doing this all by myself. And I don't have enough time throughout the day to manage all this. Plus, I have not been running. And it's been bugging me. And because I'm still getting over my bronchitis... I ran yesterday and I need to run today, but it, it, it's I need to have a better balance. And my work schedule is terrible because by the time, like every other weekend I'm off, that Friday that I normally release a podcast, if I'm working that Friday, it's hard for me to record the podcast, edit, and then send it out that night. Unless I'm off. So I still want to keep on pushing the podcast to have at least one to two podcasts per week. But again, the the book club, unfortunately, is going to have to take a seat for at least this year. So I am going to be getting advertisers in the near future. So the beginning may be different because I may be reading stuff about the products or whatever it is I'm going to be getting. So hopefully, you, as my listeners, are going to benefit from this. Because again, the show is still free. But at the very end of the show, there is going to be um, a link, or at least I'll give you the, the website, for you to take my survey about the show. And it's just, again, something about you that it's about five questions and just basically your demographic information. So that will help me to continue producing this podcast in the future. So write it down or go to the show notes. It will be listed there. So lots of stuff going on. More so that I'm more upset about this thing about what President Orange Cheeto said this past week, which has to do with the Civil War. And I'm going to play a clip from him so you can listen to the problem that I have and how I want to resolve it. People don't realize, you know, the Civil War. um, Yeah. You think about it. Why? People don't ask that question. But why was there the Civil War? Why could why could that one not have been worked out? Look, I for one, I don't support this president, but he brings up this valid question about people not asking the question, but why was there the Civil War? You know, I want to be supportive. I want to give you an honest honest answer, and hopefully by talking to you, maybe we can help bring some kind of closure to this divided nation and, and, and start this healing process because I hate the way we're going. So let's start with this. The reason why the Civil War could not be worked out is because of the Sokovia Accords. Now, the events in Sokovia and Lagos, which caused the international community to demand greater accountability and oversight for the Avengers through the collateral damage, resulting in the civilian deaths and financial costs during the, their operation. Now, that in a nutshell is the, the background about how the Civil War started. Now, to make matters even worse, it was later revealed that Steve Rogers had information about Tony Stark's parents being killed. And, of course, Bucky, his friend that he went to bat for, held that information from Tony. Hence why the two of them went to war. And ultimately, yes, that couldn't have worked out. That's why the Civil War. Dumbass. Really? I'm the dumbass, right? For talking about the Avengers and the Civil War? Double dumbass on you and the healthcare that you try to pass. I don't want to make this an issue about my podcast, but I mentioned this in my elections podcast. When you start doing crap like this, that's when it's going to go downhill for you. So, again, I don't want this podcast to be my soapbox for politics, but I'm really upset with him. 
health care has to be everyone's rights in this country. Every other country in the civil society has universal health care. We don't. And then what they're passing is legislation that allows states to opt out of what is every right for everyone to have health care. Again, my apologies. I was not planning to do this. All right. So before we get started, let's do a couple of tidbit news. We have American Gods that has premiered. So that's another series that's going to be on my plate to start watching. Aquaman has now started filming. So that's good news. And this past Friday and Thursday, I should say Thursday and Friday, May the 4th be with you. And Revenge of the 5th had just happened. So I do have a video for you that I did on the Wednesday before all of that happened in which I did this at work and I worked with some teens called You Media Miami and we did a video podcast and we did Star Wars trivia with the Bean Boozled Jelly Bellies that if you remember the Rogue One review I did with my wife we did that again with that exact same book so we had teams And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised uh, how well the teens responded. More so to eating the Jelly Belly. So they were like, let's eat some more. So I will post that again in the show notes, but I think you'll enjoy that as much. So now that I'm recording this on a Sunday, again, my delays on this, my apologies, but when it gets released, either... Um, this podcast released tonight or tomorrow, being Monday, we are going to get a Blade Runner 2049 second trailer, so I'm very eager to see that. But let's talk about the Netflix full trailer of The Defenders. You have interrupted a citywide investigation. You stole evidence from my crime scene. You got my one lead killed. I was trying to help him, but you didn't. Jessica Jones, stop talking. Who the hell are you? My name is Matthew Murdoch. I'm your attorney. How does being Harlem's hero allow you to live an actual life? Right now, I just want to help people. I think there's someone that you need to meet. Hey! What are you doing in there? Who are you? Who are you? How come you can't be hurt? What's the deal with that fist? Uh I'm the immortal Iron Fist. You what? You're on the same side. You four. The devil of hell's kitchen. The smart-ass detective. We got a problem? The righteous ex-con. My bad. And the kid with a glowing fist. Yes, I want you to be. The war for New York is here. Yes, I know to be. So get your shit together. The more connections you have the easier it will be to break you. You look like an idiot. It's your scarf. We make quite a team. No. What are you talking about? Bulletproof. Blind ninja. Whatever it is you are. Classy. Let's start off with the fact that we get all four people, four heroes. We have Luke Cage, Matt Murdock, we have Jessica Jones, and then we have you, Danny Rand. But what I loved about this is that there isn't going to be an initial clash between Luke Cage and Iron Fist, and in one shot, 
Iron Fist punches Luke Cage in the face with the Iron Fist in slow mo, and I was just like, "That's beautiful." Not that I'm advocating violence, but for the first time, I'm like, "This can actually redeem Iron Fist because he's now no longer a douche." <laughs> But this looked really, really good. I was really happy with this. And of course, we are going to get uh, Sigourney Weaver in this role. But as far as the story and how this is all going to play out, I have no idea. But I'm excited that the Defenders are now going to be coming in a couple months. Come uh, August 18th, as they said in the uh, teaser trailer, which was awful, of the heroes in an elevator, black and white, camera footage and you hear the audio like going down and then Jessica Jones punches the camera and that was all there is but seeing this made me feel okay maybe Iron Fist was just a bad fluke but this looks exciting I'm really happy about this and there's this one hallway scene in which all the heroes are fighting together and they're in sync and it's just like all right, we are going to get back on track, at least for Netflix sake, with these heroes. And then I was just reading uh, earlier today, now Kevin Feige is throwing, trying to say that we're going to now cross the TV universe and the cinematic universe together. Okay. Uh, we'll see how, how that happens. But I'll talk about that in the next podcast next week. Oh, and... Speaking of which, the second podcast to this week would have been Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. My co-host, Mr. Gene, is going to see it later next week. Unfortunately, because of all the stuff that I had to go through this week, I just did not have any energy to go watch this yesterday. So, I'm going to try to make an effort to see it before he does, or on a day of, or somewhere during the week. But I promise it will get out soon. So be patient on that. All right. So let me also come back to you after I play the trailer for Dark Tower, which is a Stephen King novel, which is an eight part series. Okay. Thousands of generations, the gunslingers were knights. Sworn to protect us from the coming of the dark. These visions, as you call them. What do you see? I see a tower. The man in black. And the gunslinger. They're just dreams. They're not real, Jake. another world out there. I know there is. Who are you? It's you. You're a gunslinger, right? There are no gunslingers. Not anymore. Why does the man in black want to destroy the tower? The tower protects both our worlds. If it falls... Hell will be unleashed. He's like the devil, isn't he? No, he's worse. You can't stop what's coming. Death always wins. Your world might be gone, but mine isn't. If you let that tower fall, billions of people die. Do they have guns and bullets in your world? You're gonna like Earth a lot. All right, let's go. You clawing your way out of the darkness? Did you tell the kid whoever walks with you dies by my hand? I will kill him for both of us. I do not aim at my hand. He who aims with his hand has forgotten the face of his father. I aim with my eye. I do not shoot with my hand. Jake! I 
do not kill with my gun. I kill with my heart. All right, so that was the trailer for The Dark Tower. Okay, I don't know anything about this at all, other than when this was made into a book, when Stephen King wrote this, The Glass Tower, or Glass and the Wizards, I forget which of the eight-part series that was in high demand, this was something that's going to be huge and epic, and it was unfilmable at the time. This is back in 93. Kind of like what happened with The Stand, also another huge book. But that one was one book, as opposed to this long, epic story. I don't know how they're going to work in the storyline, or at least, are they going to be planning to do more series or more movies after this? I will give the fact that you have Idris Elba, who... Again, is fantastic in anything that he does. Of course, the couple of ooh moments is him and how he is able to load his gun with his bullets, either by uh, moving against the, the, the gun belt and then somehow the, the bullets wind up in the barrel or the barrel or the, the bullets are in the air and then he flings his gun in front and then somehow they get into the barrel and then off he goes to the races alright aside from that which reminds me of like the Kevin Costner um, Robin Hood moment in which you have that that arrow shot that he pulls back and and get the POV shot of the arrow going straight into the target and boom and then they tell the rest of the story that's what I'm thinking that's going to be but I don't want this to suck either. So I'm all for, you know, Stephen King. And I still have to finish up Under the Dome. Which I think ended already at the third season. But this is just kind of... I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. So I will have to ask my wife. Who, again, she's been on this podcast before. And ask her opinion. And what she thinks about the trailer. I'll watch it for what it is and and just see what goes from that point on. But considering like the success of Game of Thrones has been doing, that if you're going to be doing something that epic and you already have the books, let's not try to do, you know, a two hour plus movie to try to hold to tell the whole story. If it was meant to be not drawn out, but if it's meant to be that long, maybe now is the time to bring it to, you know, a a TV network, uh, Netflix, Hulu, even Amazon. Now is the time to actually produce things of that caliber because there is an audience for it. Production values are going to definitely help tell that story over a much longer course of time, as opposed to two hours of who the hell is that person? Oh, that's Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. Now, and him driving his Lincoln car somewhere around the story. You know, I don't want that. If people are going to be shortchanged, I'm sure I'll read about it and I'll hear about it. But honestly, I just think. Now is the kind of time in which you can do stories like Game of Thrones and really delve into world building and and really have fun with that. So, but we'll see with that. So let's move on to Philip K. Dick's anthology series on Amazon. So yes, it's not that Electric Dreams that I thought, which was the movie called Electric Dreams, 
that Giorgio Moroder wrote the song for, and he's one of my favorite composers. But, again, I don't have any Electric Dream soundtrack that is going to be for this new show. So, if you are a fan like I am, I love Philip K. Dick's work. It is everything that I like about questioning about what it is to be human, alternate realities. That's the guy that I go to. And his work has always been top-notch. Now, granted, most of the time you hear the phrase, but the book was so much better than the movie. In some cases, it's not. (laughs) But sometimes the idea from the book became the movie and became a better movie because of the idea. Not necessarily doing the whole book verbatim. So, perfect example is do androids dream of electric sheep, which became the basis for Blade Runner. So that in itself, when I did the audiobook, I can understand what elements were taken out for Ridley Scott's version of that movie and called the Blade Runner. And when I tried to read the graphic novel of that book, I couldn't even get through that a second time. <laughs> so it was just... It's very awkward and it's very clunky. Uh, so yeah, there are the times in which it doesn't work for me. Um, we can remember for you. We can remember it for you at wholesale. Was a short story, but that became the basis of Total Recall. So in the course of this, uh, basically it was an agent, but basically he wanted to go back into the world that he was living in and not the, the real world that, that he wanted to. Uh, escape from but in Total Recall I love what they did in Total Recall again because of the whole you're not sure if this is your memories or this reality or who can you trust and basically when you look at all his stuff and of course there's Man in the High Castle which is dealing with an alternate future timeline in which the Nazis in Japan had won uh there's the, the book called The Adjustment Team, which became The Adjustment Bureau, which I loved. Uh, Emily Blunton with Matt Damon. Uh, Screamers is another good movie that I loved. And A Scanner Darkly, I could not get into because it's really animated. But it's just so weird to kind of like focus on. But... That's because of the period in his life he was going through with his drugs. You kind of see, saw things that way, and it was just kind of like, oh, okay, I, I don't want to go with that. And there's there's Imposter. Hey, here's a spoiler ending. I'm a butt. <laughs> if you've seen the movie, then you understand the reference. So that's a spoiler right there. <laughs> So there are a couple of great hits overall. And so when I was looking at all the the short story listings, I'm like, is is there going to be enough for him to have like a full series or full anthology series? And apparently there's going to be. Uh, The latest news that came out this week is that um, Anna Paquin, who you know is Rogue and she was in True Blood, and Terrence Howard, who was the first Rhodey in the first Iron Man movie and now he's on Empire is going to be part of this cast so I'm already happy to begin with the fact that they're doing this kind of focus on one writer just like Stephen King is like he goes to the nth degree telling great stories but somehow like his early stuff the third act just has problems I'm kind of interested to see how they're going to do an an anthology series a la Philip K. Dick's universe because, again, I'm always fascinated what he does and how he looks at the world around us. And again, he suffered from schizophrenia and depression and he committed suicide. He tried to commit suicide as well. So he, he had numerous drugs in the system. So, you know, all of that really influenced a lot of the writing that we see in his work so 
let's see how that actually all gets played out. But I'm really, really excited about this. So, and of course, I, I forgot to mention going back, um, there is going to be kind of like an anthology series with King's work in which all the characters are all going to be kind of connected through Castle Rock. So I think that's also coming on Hulu. So that's also, that's going to be interesting to see that come down the fall or whenever it does premiere. Now, I mentioned all this ahead of what's going to happen with Hulu, but Hulu is going through its own changes. So before I do that, I'm going to play a quick little trailer, believe it or not. There's a trailer for Hulu now, because it's updated now. So I'll be back in a moment to talk more about Hulu. Next to my stuff is browse. With the live TV plan, you can browse over 50 live and on-demand networks. Every Hulu plan can browse TV shows, movies, and more. While you watch, you can continue to browse and see what's up next by pressing up. Or by tapping the controls on your phone or tablet. On Apple TV, it's a swipe up. Add what you're watching or flip to something new. A new Hulu experience is here. It's available right now on select devices with more devices updating throughout the year. Okay, so let's begin with a couple of bits of news for Hulu. We have Handmaid's Tale, which I talked about in the last podcast, has been renewed for season two. So it's one of the highest uh, ratings that Hulu has had in its original programming. We are going to get a new Marvel series called Runaway. So if you know the Runaway series, basically it's teenagers who find out that their parents are actually villains and they're going to find ways to stop their parents from being, you know, asses or a-holes or whatever you want to call it. So that's kind of cool. We are going to get Atlanta. Uh, It's going to be streamed and that's basically from... This series stars, and it was created by Donald Glover, who, if you know him from Community, he is now going to be the young Lando Calrissian. So we'll get to see him next year for that. But this is a highly critically acclaimed series, which I'm very eager to see. And then on top of that, let me get back to my notes. And then we're going to get a series called... um, the first, I'm oh, sorry, we're going to get another Mars series, which, uh, okay, I I liked the Mars series that was already uh, streamed after National Geographic had played it, and it was renewed for a season two, but we're going to get another Mars series. So I'm like, don't remember when we had the issue like with Mars uh, uh, needs moms or Red Planet, we got too much Mars stuff, and we're going to go go down that road again, so, I don't know, Uh, that's the only thing that I wasn't crazy about with Hulu's decision, but the big news is that they're going to be adding a live TV service, so, like, YouTube is going to do, they're looking at ways to, people like me, who cut the cord a long time ago or they're looking to pe- people who want to have access to TV and to cable like shows to still have a choice in which it's much cheaper to stream stuff well that's one option so for their price they're looking at 39.95 which I'm not sure if I want to go down that road but then again I don't have access to food network to the Sci-Fi Channel, uh, Cartoon Network, or all the other stuff that I used to love watching endlessly when I had cable. But having said that, I have to make then a decision as to do I cut um, my Netflix series? So, do I keep my current Netflix service? Do I keep Amazon? Uh, That's something I'm going to cross that bridge and decide what's going to go on. 
I mean, there are benefits in which I love all the great content that Netflix has. I also love the the convenience that I have with Amazon because, oh, again, the com the com. I also love Amazon for what it has as far as content. Plus, I have access to great music, free shipping, and so forth. So. We'll see if, if I'm willing to up the bucks. That might be something worth that's my time. The other option is that you can pay a little bit higher and add the DVR function, which is something I never had before. But my question is because even though it has local channels like NBC, ABC, and CBS, because of CBS, this is I have to now research about all access. Now. Because the all access, if you know about Star Trek in,、uh, into Discovery, Star Trek Discovery, the new TV series that's coming out, supposedly in the fall, is only going to be behind a digital wall called CBS All Access. So, if you have to pay for that, is that going to be included with that service that I have through Hulu? I have a feeling that I won't, but that's when you're going to have a problem, because if you decide to put stuff behind a paywall, and you're hoping that that's going to be your your launch pad or your linchpin to、uh, have people pay for your stuff, and then you have people like Hulu are kind of like giving you more without the need for cable. Then, why would you need cable, or why would I need this, and then pay for additional stuff just to have content? So, I don't mind the a la carte option in which I can pick and choose, but this is becoming an issue. There is before a lack of competition because we only had like the three main channels back in the day. Again. The big networks, and then we had Fox join into the mix, and then of course we get into cable, in which you get like thousands of channels, and like the old song goes, and yet there is still nothing on. That was a problem that I had, paying exorbitant amount of prices for stuff you didn't like, and then of course Netflix came along with their DVDs, and then opted to do streaming, which became more popular, and that's where. The cord cutting revolution kind of took place, but now it's a lot of stuff that is out there. So, oh, we'll we'll see how this all plays out. But for me, I would love to get rid of my digital rabbit ears from the living room and just watch regular TV in my bedroom, and it'd be nice to do that and not have to worry about the problems with. You know, cars passing by, or just someone walking by, the rabbit ears, and the the channel gets delayed or distorted because of interference by our bodily、uh, presence. So, but again, I'm very happy with what Hulu is doing because, again, I was upset with them a couple of months back, and I even emailed them saying, "Why are you dropping all this great content?" And again, due to licensing issues. Their contract had ran, so unfortunately, it happens. But again, Hulu is really picking up steam. They're really making a bold,、um, a bold choice to go forward and make this more competitive against Netflix and against Amazon and against also YouTube. So those are the big channels that.、Uh, Are vowing for our time on the big screen and small screen, so so we'll see how this all plays out. But I'm excited about this. But again, thirty nine ninety five. We'll see. We'll see how this all plays out. So let me talk about then Dimension Four or Four. I'm going to be playing the quick trailer or quick opening, I should say, for the series. In which you'll hear a familiar voice. So, see if we can guess who that is. I'm sorry, viewer. The TV show you're searching for cannot be streamed in your reality. Please stand by for reconnection. 
In the darkest depths of cyberspace, there is another world. A lost dimension, home to wonders unseen, terrors unspeakable. Stories unlike any ever told until now. Do not click back. Do not reload. We have reconnected to... Dimension 404. Alright, so that was, if you didn't guess by now, our old friend Mark Hamill. So he is... Old. <laughs> So, let's start off with what the hell is Dimension 404? Well, again, to go a little bit further back, it appeared on Hulu, and was only for six episodes, but the people who produced this, they had a series called Rocket Jump The Show, or Rocket Jump The Series. So, last summer, I got to watch this small independent group make short films and they film the behind the scenes and how it was all put together and each week they had you know a limited amount of time budget resources but they still had to produce a high quality short and what was great about this is that you can see the enthusiasm the fun and you know, pulling back the curtain to see how this is all made, and I'm like, I used to love that world. I really did. Because I wanted to make movies, too. But, of course, my life went into a different direction, but still, I live vicariously through them. And the the fan films that I liked, that they did, one was, was called Fan Friction. So, if you get a chance, watch that and watch Fan Friction by Ashley Birch, who... Another one who I have a crush on. She had issues with um, not, not necessarily a panic disorder, but she was really anxious about how she was directing this piece and writing it. And it was turned out to be one of my favorite short films from that series. So, big crush on Ashley. Um, Truck Flipper versus Bus Puncher was another great one. Freddy's Vlog, Walk and Talk. Jesse's Jesse's Big Date, who actually acted in, and Keep Off the Grass. Those are my favorite ones. So if you get a chance and you have Hulu, check out that series. And again, that was my order of my favorites. So basically, from there they created another series, and basically, the, and basically, this is just an, a sci-fi anthology series, like we talked about with Philip K. Dick. But basically, is using their take on telling creative stories with limited about uh, with limited amount of money and budget uh, for extras but are still able to tell a full one hour story so this started on April 4th and just recently ended its sixth episode so they had um, a great number of people guest starring in these episodes. You had Leah Michelle in the first episode. You also had Patton Oswalt uh, in the second one. And of course, my favorite Ashley was in there too. Um, in the third episode, you had Adrian Barbeau. Oh, I'm sorry, that was the fourth one. <laughs> the third one, I don't know anyone there, but still a lot of fun. Um, and then the fifth one, uh, we had Megan Mullaney, sorry, Megan Mullally and Constance Wu. And I'll talk about that episode in a moment. And then as far as the last one, I don't remember anyone in there. But the six episodes that were there, the first one was Matchmaker. And basically, the, the synopsis is a finicky music blogger finally meets the girl of his dreams through the cutting edge online dating call Make a Match, but their chemistry seems to be too good to be true. And we have to do a quick cameo in Joel McHale, uh, the one who created the whole Make a Match series. Um, Synthrax was the second one, um, a snooty cinema purist who was just Patton Oswald's character. 
struggles to convince his fellow filmgoers that the 3D movie they're watching is summoning forth a brain-sucking interdimensional monster only he can see. So they kind of play on the they live scenario with the glasses. So I thought that was kind of cool. And the third one was Kronos. A hopelessly a hopelessly nostalgic hopelessly nostalgic physics student fights to prove her sanity when no one on earth can remember her favorite 90s cartoon. Fourth one, Polybius, an arcade uh, junkie attempts to master Polybius, a sinister new game of unknown origin that includes nightmare visions, but when kids start dying, he must beat the game to unlock its deadly secrets. Fifth one is called Bob, and it starts off with, as a holiday treat, as a holiday threat looms large, an army psychologist races against the clock to treat the strangest patient of her career. And the only one who can save Christmas, Bob, a depressed NSA supercomputer. And the last one is called Impulse, and it's a brash, up and coming pro FPS gamer finds the edge she needs in an energy drink that gives her the real world bullet time. It's a shortcut to frame and fort is a shortcut yeah. It's a shortcut to fame and fortune, but it might be a shortcut through the rest of her life. So out of the six episodes, Bob, number five, was fantastic. Constant woo. If you watch Fresh Off the Boat, I have enormous love, mad love for her, but she was fantastic in this. And basically, Bob is this massive supercomputer brain in which he's trying to hunt down this criminal, but somehow it's blocked out. Like, he cannot find out where this person is anywhere. So, Constant is brought in to help Bob deal with his issues. So, it was fantastic. I really, really loved this. The second one was Kronos. And again, it was kind of the the reason why I liked it because there was a lot of time travel elements in it, and they were kind of reminding me of Bill and Ted's excellent excellent uh, adventure. So, again, a lot of fun with that. Synthrax, it was okay. I I loved the, the They Live reference, and again, Ashley was in it, so that's why it's even in there. And then Impulse, it was okay. Uh, as number four, Matchmaker number five, which was the very first one, and Polybius was number six. So even though it had Adrian Barbeau, who I always think about her as Adrian Barbeau bot from Sequest, not Sequest, C Lab, <laughs> um, it was okay. It, it didn't wow me over. And I think a lot of the overall problems is that the the ideas are interesting, and it's it's well acted. Even it has limited sets, they are still telling a story, but it's hard to kind of get invested in a story within one episode of who these people are and for us to even care about them. And then, boom, off they're gone. We have another story, another cast, and off you all, off you go to the races. So that's the only problem that I have with the series, and it's just in general with anthology series. If the stories are not compelling or well acted or in really engaging, like Twilight Zone, Outer Limits, or even the updated Outer Limits, which I fantastically love that because even their stories as being individual towards the end wind up being all connected and just like I was just totally blown away by that. So the mention four or four was of course referring to the 404 error message that if you go to a site, it's not there. You just can't connect. That's where you get. So throughout every episode, 404 does show up and Mark Hamill does the narration. So it's like Amazing Stories and it's, and it's very much like Amazing Stories. Not every single story was great and they were not always amazing. So it's okay. 
But because I like Rocket Jump and the people behind the scenes, and again, Ashley's part of this, this is the reason why I even watch. And this is why I even talk about this, because they're fun to, to at least, if you have nothing else to do, and you just want mindless fun just to kind of like not get vested, not to get... If you're looking for mindless fun and not to get too vested into characters, then this is it for you. That's exactly what it's perfect for. But unlike me, you know, I hate the one and done love. For me, I hate the whole one and done episodes. Just because there are some really good episodes and then you are done. And I hate that. So, but nonetheless, that's what it is. So, again, check out Hulu, all those great programming, and Dimension 404. Let me know what you think about that. All right, so, sadly, I am done. I am done planning with this podcast for this week. So, as I said, I'm going to be doing the Guardians of the Galaxy very soon. Again, once Mr. Gene and I get to watch the damn movie. And I still have my Arrow, I have my Flash and Supergirl, even Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Gotham still to watch as far as their season finale. So hopefully that will make up for the Lack of the Doom book club. So again, as I mentioned before, in my show notes, I will have a link to the survey for my podcast. I need your help. Again, it's just demographic information, your marriage or sing, your marital your marital status, income, uh, things of that nature. Very simple, easy peasy. So it's survey.lipson.com forward slash the monster sci-fi show all together. And it's not S Y F Y, but S C I F I show. So I really appreciate the fact that you're listening to my show and you really are enjoying it. So keep on doing it. I will keep on doing what I can to keep you entertained. So again, I'm having fun and I want to continue having fun with you. So with that, thank you very much for listening to me and to my podcast, The Monster Sci-Fi Show. Remember, you can always follow me on the various social networks email me. Come on, folks. Email me at monstersci-fi-show at gmail.com. So, with that, come on. You know the phrase. It's sci-fi. From a certain point of view. Good night. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network, your station for all things geek, classic, current, and beyond. Be part of the crew at esonetwork.com.